All right, so now let's talk about hydrocephalus. We've mentioned this many times before, but uh, this is dilation of the ventral ventricles due to increased CSF volume. Um, and these patients may have increased intracranial pressure because of increased volume, or they may not. Um, and then the other thing is these patients, this can be due to a communi communicating cause or a non-communicating. Communicating means that CSF can, is still flowing, it's communicating through the ventricles, but there is uh, something causing the CSF to build up, and it's usually poor absorption. Uh, the other thing is non-communicating is uh, due to, basically, there is the CSF is not flowing through the ventricles for some reason, it's obstructed. So it's not communicating, the ventricles are not communicating, and CSF is not flowing. So into the communicating causes, there's two of them. First is communicating hydrocephalus. How lucky us, how simple. Um, and it's uh, hydrocephalus, even though the ventricles are not obstructed, and like I mentioned before, it can either be to dec um, decreased absorption by the arachnoid granulations. Um, the main one that you want to remember is due to scarring from meningitis. So you can see a patient oftentimes um, had meningitis, the uh, arachnoid villi gets scarred up, poor absorption of CSF, and you get hydrocephalus. The other reason that can cause this is a choroid plexus increased production of CSF. Um, that can be anything like a choroid plexus tumor or something. It's not very common, but this is possible. The other cause of uh, hydrocephalus um, without blockage is something called normal pressure hydrocephalus. We actually don't know why this happens, okay? But the symptoms here, and we've mentioned this before, are wet, wobbly, wacky. I th love that mnemonic. I don't know why. But I never forget it. Okay, so NPH normal pressure hydro normal pressure hydrocephalus presents with wet, wobbly, wacky urinary incontinence. They fall a lot. Their dementia, their cognitive changes. This is usually an elderly patient. Um, and then you can see from the name already that the intracranial pressure is normal. Okay, normal pressure hydrocephalus. Um, next, we're going to go into the non-communicating hydrocephalus. Um, this is due to obstructive ventricles. We've already covered the congenital causes. Remember the Chiari malformation, Danny Walker syndrome. We just covered that. Uh, and there's also a couple of acquired causes, including tumor. Anything that can block up the ventricles that you can imagine is possible. It's tumor, stenosis of the aqueductus sylvius. Um, this has intracranial pressure, as you can imagine. It's obstructed. Ventricles are building up pressure, and so you get pressure, um, symptoms of increased intracranial pressure. Headache, nausea, vomiting, papilledema. Finally, we have hydrocephalus mimics. So it looks like hydrocephalus, but it's actually not. Um, and that one, the one that falls into this category is hydrocephalus ex vacuole. So it looks like your ventricles are dilated, but it's actually relative. It's because this is cerebral atrophy with decreased brain tissue. Um, notably, the ones that can cause that are Alzheimer's or Pick's disease. Um, those neurodegenerative diseases, when we, we said widespread cortical atrophy. So um, if, the brain, if the, the brain matter atrophies, then the ventricles look bigger in comparison, so it looks like you have hydrocephalus, okay? So it's a relative change in um, how big the ventricles look. All right, so that's it for our um, causes of hydrocephalus. Remember, just to break it down, it's communicating versus non-communicating, and it's pretty simple.